Welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. We invite you to this time, where we seek to grow together in love of God and love of neighbor. Let's center ourselves before we begin. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence and love for you. Breathing out all the anxieties and worries of today. Our theme this week is saying yes to God's call. Saying yes to God's call. As we begin, hear this affirmation from Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6, and the petition we bring to God. God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Give us the grace to make your word our home, that we know you more clearly and serve you more faithfully evermore. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the prophet Jeremiah. Remember, our theme is God's call. And friends, God has a call on your life right now to partner with God in creating good things, to partner with God in the redemption story. Hear Jeremiah's call. Jeremiah chapter 1, starting in verse 4. The Lord's word came to me, before I created you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I made you a prophet to the nations. Lord God, I said, I don't know how to speak because I'm only a child. The Lord responded, Don't say, I'm only a child. Where I send you, you must go. What I tell you, you must say, don't be afraid of them, because I'm with you to rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, touched my mouth, and said to me, I'm putting my words in your mouth. This very day I appoint you over nations and empires to dig up and pull down, to destroy and demolish, to build and to plant. May God bless the reading of the prophet today. What a wonderful call story. I knew you. Before I created you in your mother's womb, I knew you. We truly believe that God knows us better than anyone, and God has been calling us since before we were even born. I know in my own life, looking back, hindsight is twenty twenty. after all, I see God's call moving through my life. I was born into a pastoral family. I was born into a church community that gave me the words I needed, the foundation I needed, the experience I needed to build upon. I was born to parents who each had qualities that are alive and well in me, that together work in different ways that worked in either one of them. And I see back throughout early stages in my life where God gave me experiences my first recollection of God's presence, of God's mystic divine energy was when I was around eight years old, where we were at a concert at church, uh, just a kind of small gospel concert. And I felt myself kind of being raised up, kind of a mountaintop experience, a mystic experience, we would say. And I felt and experienced God in a way that I hadn't. But even back further, when I was very young, I remember being at church. I remember being under the table in the fellowship hall at my uh, the church where I was born, Fenton United Methodist Church. 
experiencing God's love and the love of community and the love of people. I remember going and being present at different functions and potlucks and funerals and weddings. And being at church, laying in the front pew, my mother singing in the choir, my father being the pastor. Maybe my brother sitting with me while he was still living at home. He's much older than I am. But I also know throughout my life, I can look back and I can see, even before I accepted or heard my call, God put me in situations and places where I found myself in places and situations where I was formed in a way that gave me the skills and the talents I needed to do ministry, to build community, to share love. And you have that story. Wherever you are, whatever mistakes you've made, whatever blunders have been in your life, all of that can be used together for good. God can take where you are because God knows you. There isn't any person on earth, even yourself, who knows you like God knows you. And so don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Don't worry. Because God can take your life, your victories, your failures, your success, your moments of darkness and despair, your mountaintops, and together moves you to where you are called today. And can take all of those experiences, good or bad, and use them for good. Friends, I truly do not believe that God micromanages our life that God causes bad things to happen. I certainly don't believe God tempts us. But I do believe God can take whatever we have and make good of it. I do believe that much of our life happens because of the choices we make. But when we choose to follow God, when we choose to live in that divine love and light, when we choose to answer our call, we will find ourselves moving our choices in line with that redemption story, with that cosmic plan, with that something that's bigger than all of us combined and then some. And in that, we find true happiness, true purpose, and true love. Friends, as we come to our time of prayer, I thought it might be a good exercise to do some different prayer practices. This week, I'd like to focus on a very special prayer that you might be familiar with. Reinhold Niebuhr, great theologian and member of our Christian faith, wrote a prayer that has been used over and over and over again in many forms and shapes. It's actually at the core of recovery movements like AA. We refer to it as the serenity prayer. And this week, each day, I want to pray that prayer with you in its fullness. If you'd like a copy of that prayer, you can reach out to me, or you can simply Google the serenity prayer, Reinhold Niebuhr, if you're having trouble. Let us adopt an attitude of prayer today. I'll offer the serenity prayer in its full version. Then we'll have a minute of silence. And then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. God, give me the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Courage to change the things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy 
with you forever in the next. Let us join into a moment of silence, asking God for that serenity and peace in our lives this day. And friends, let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen friends as we end our time together i want to leave you with god's promise this comes from deuteronomy 3:18 and our response to that beautiful promise. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. We have heard your call, our Lord. We have responded with a yes that arises from the depths of our being. We know that if we follow close to you, Nothing shall be able to separate us from your awesome love. Friends, until next time, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.